Hey guys, it's Martin Garrix. I just had an amazing interview with the, on the Zach Sang show. And if you want to find out everything about the new single and about all the other songs I've ever made, check it out. Let's do this. Wow, Martin Garrix is in the studio right now. This is actually happening, dude. We did it. We did it. <laughs> Hello, beautiful humans. Dan's here too, but really, the focus is Martin Garrix. All right. Hey. Yo. Hello. Yo. How are you? Good, man. How are you? Dude, I'm I'm trying to thrive, and I think I'm on my way there. And I, I'm happy that you're here because I'm a huge fan of your freaking music. Thank you, man. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time and giving us the energy. I don't even really know where to start here because there's so much going on, but you have a new single out. Yeah. You got Patrick Stump on there. Macklemore's on it. Yeah. Summer Days. Yes. This name of this record, you're obviously looking for a summer anthem, yeah? I wanted to make a song that people would just bless in their cars, windows open, or when they're on the beach, like, chilling with their friends. I just want to make a song that, that goes along with summer memories for a lifetime. That's beautiful. And the music video is pretty good, too. Sweaty. <laughs> sweaty. Yeah, very sweaty. <laughs> I, I sweat a lot on stage. That's the inspiration. It, I've watched your show. Your 21st birthday party show was unlike anything I have ever seen before in my life. You yeah. leave it all out there. And yeah, it, it, it's crazy. It was really fun, and I'm happy you were there. It was, it was, it was a great night. So, w when you're working on your set list, is it different every show? Do you yeah. have a like? Do you have parameters that you kind of create within? Well, for me, whenever I do a Vegas show, it's completely different. I, I literally play whatever I want to play at the moment I want to play it. And for whenever we do like a Garrick show on tour, um, I never know my set list, but I do know I'm gonna play like "Scared to Be Lonely," "Name of Love," mm -hmm. "Animals." So I have an amazing team who is, who is really, really quick with adjusting the show, light-wise, laser-wise, visually. So I have the freedom to play whatever song I want at any time in the set. And they also Whoa. have a system that they could see what song I load in next. Uh -huh. So it's not that I surprise them with the next song I'm going to play. They could just see it and then it can be like they could set up the lights already ready for the next look. You're always on the same page. Yeah, I'm, I, I've also worked with them for like four years, so uh, yeah, we just we just sit, we brainstorm, and and we we try to make something more than just a DJ set. We want we want people to see it as an experience, you know. How important is it for you while you're on tour to have that freedom to kind of morph the set list with your mood and pick and choose when you play things? Because it, you do so many shows, like it, it it's actually hard to wrap my mind around <laughs> how many places you play in a single year. To keep it fresh, is that vital? The fact that like you don't have the exact, you're not playing the exact same songs at the exact same times every single night? 100%. And for me, it, the only thing why I still have so much fun doing shows, besides seeing thousands of people happy, is the fact that I have to challenge myself. And every show is different. If every show was the same, I would get bored. The fans would get bored. And that's the last thing that we want. You know, we want people, I want people, to, like, like, I get, I, got a tweet yesterday like this was the eighth time uh seeing you and and it never gets bored and i was like okay that's my mission you know i, I wanted to be un unpredictable un unexpected because if you surprise people then they'll talk about it and then you leave an impact you want that for them yeah but but also l let's be frank you want it for you yeah you course. have decades left in this industry you don't want to get bored no i i i have too much fun in being on stage and challenging myself in trying something new, in, in exploring new things, um, also in testing out new material. And I I love doing shows. I love testing out new material, seeing the response live. I love trying out new things, see if it works. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, okay, then next time I'll try something else, you know? So can you tell if the crowd's not feeling a song you're playing? Yeah. And uh, what do you do, just switch it out real quick? No, for me what I do is, I, I it's like very uh, confidential. No. Um, <laughs> I have songs that I know the crowd 100% will go crazy to. If I play Scared to be Lonely or Animals or Tremor, yeah. um, I have some very crazy club songs that I know will 100% work. So I start my set very aggressive, but I wait with playing those songs until I see the crowd loses a little bit of uh, yeah. interest or like they, they get a little tired or something. Then I then I play like one of the bigger songs and then they're, they're back at it again. It's so a it's, you have to make sure they have 100% focus and attention the whole set long. And... There's been some shows where I they they they've been like going crazy the whole time and I had all those 
epic songs for the end. So the last half hour was like one medley of all the big songs. And that, that is like the perfect show because the last part is what everybody remembers, goes home with in their mind. Uh, it sticks with them. Yeah. Well, you mentioned for your Vegas sets that you have freedom when it comes to picking the songs that you play. Is mm -hmm. that freeing to you or is that scary? Like the ability great. To, to play anything. I love it. I I'll, 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 I play anything. I, And that's the fun <laughs> thing about it. Um, I just like to experiment. I like to try new things. I like to test out new material. And Vegas, Vegas itself in general is like a very interesting, different type of market. It's like the crossroads of the world and everybody's super intoxicated just looking <laughs> to forget the evening. But at the same time, have an experience that they want to have again and tell everybody about. Yeah. It's fascinating. It's it's amazing. Have you ever gone clubbing yourself? Um, Yes. Uh, I like I like partying myself. Yeah. I, I also love going to festivals whenever I have the time and I'm not playing myself. Or even if I'm playing, I'll go earlier to look at other acts, other bands. I, I, I like to get inspiration from... From watching other people, their shows, their energy, their stage, like the stage presence. Like, what are you watching for? Are you like, are you watching for song flow? Or are you watching for how they interact? Like, what I'm, do you study? It, everything, like show. I, I'm, I'm more of a freak about like the visuals, etc. Because I, I know what I'm doing music wise, and uh, I, a lot of my shows where where I'm doing festival shows is it's like ninety five percent my own music, so. I, I like to be inspired with with different ways, like how 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 did they do their movement with the lights, the lasers, and what type of visuals, what's the energy like, how does it sound, um, and besides that, I also love partying if I have friends with me, and I'm a huge fan of of bands and acts myself. So whenever I can, whenever I share the same, whenever I share the same stage with one of the bands that I'm a huge fan of, of course I'm gonna watch it. I'll be <laughs> in the crowd or at the front of house with the biggest smile on my face, singing all their songs. I've wanted to talk to you for a while, like at length, because you're, one, your art is awesome to me, but two, I really want to understand how you create and what the process is like, because growing up, you did play instruments, right? You played guitar. Yeah, guitar. And it, it was the Olympics that changed your life. Mm -hmm. You see Tiesto perform, and you're like, well, I got to try this. Yeah. And then you go to a computer, and you try to figure it out. Yeah. Fruity Loops is the first thing you download. Yeah. Do you have? Do you even like have that first beat that you created, ever? Like I have, I have, I still have the computer. I think I just have to like dust it off and <laughs> get it working again. But it's somewhere there. But trust me, it's not worth listening to. <laughs> so like, how do you start, right? Like, so you have Fruity Loops, you have a guitar, and you have a want to create music and be a DJ. Well, for me, I, it started as a hobby. You know, I. I was just messing around and, and I would record like whenever I would have like a small school break or like some time in between lessons, I would go with friends to my school, uh, sorry, to my house in between school and I would record their voices. We would chop it up, pitch it weird and we'd make a beat out of it saying like stupid funny shit. But it all started as like just fun and hobby and, and just trying and experimenting and sometimes I would re record my guitar, pitch it, reverse it, chop it up. Sometimes I would just draw in my melodies. Sometimes I would like, you would hear me like, poof, like do a kick drum recorded and kick drum sound like I replace it with a real kick drum. But the whole process of, of there's no rules, just having fun with my friends, making music and creating something that wasn't there before, it, it, it intrigued me, it, 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 it inspired me, made me happy. Was it motivating in a way that made you want to get better at it? Like yeah. So, did you know what good sounded like back then? No, I, I, not when I started. But then I started doing a lot of research. Um, of course, I, I, I fell in love with hardstyle, with electronic music, house music, trance from what Chester was playing. So, of course, from buying those CDs and listening to those sounds, and I had this computer program that I could make my music with. My my first thing was like trying to recreate all the sounds, and if I couldn't figure it out myself, I would look up tutorials. And so you started by trying to replicate yeah. exactly what the the record sounded like. Yeah, and and then I don't know. I also learned a lot from being on internet forums, from working with 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 people that I met through the forum, and then I I I accidentally found some tricks that worked for me, and then they had their own tricks. We would share it. 
I'd be like, oh, well, I do this and this for this sound. I would do this and this for that sound. And we would learn from each other and from all the collabs. And it's such a fun, fun thing because I was just homies with people on the internet who shared the same passion. Because in, in school, I was a weirdo. Like, <laughs> I, I, would, I would not know anything about anything that was going on, but like new sample pack releases or new plugins. Or <laughs> On the internet, you were so cool. Yeah, I was a gangster. <laughs> you, you mentioned creating music with your friends and having no rules. It, that that must be an important stage to eventually creating music that has rules, right? It's that freedom to kind of figure it out. It yeah. allows you to like focus it. For me, it was it was it, it was so fun because I didn't think I didn't have like an audience. Like the people who listened to my music were my my friends and my parents and my sister, <laughs> and I was happy. I was satisfied when they said they liked it. And I was sad when they said they didn't like it, but they were honest and that's what you need. And I don't know, from having fun experimenting and, and getting to know people on the forum um, and of course improving uh, production wise, um, I was 14 and someone reached out to me because he was in need for a producer. So Whoa. that was my first job, real job. It was making music for other people. So. Um, I would, I would make club. This was when I already was making house music. When I started, I just made anything, um, and I would sell those ideas. So that was how, how. And then from the money that I got with those ideas, I would buy like a better DJ set, or like better speakers for in the studio. And then one moment, uh, when I was fifteen, one of those songs blew up, and was on spinning records. And was it Error? No, no, Error was under my own name. This was under someone else's name. And then they needed a follow-up, and I was like, well, I can produce the follow-up for you, but I want you to introduce me to the label. Mm -hmm. So, Giddy up. fast forward, I'm, I'm meeting with the label, they look at me, because I was 14 or 15, like, what? <laughs> You're not behind the song that blew up last year. <laughs> and um, so they, they joined me to my studio, because they didn't believe I made my own stuff. And then we just started working from that point, like sending back and forth demos, um, and I, that's when I decided DJ Marty was not a good name <laughs> and then I had to switch it to Martin Garrix. But, okay, so you're DJ Marty and you create a record yeah. that somebody else takes and it becomes a hit. Mm -hmm. They now need more out of you and you're only 14 years old. Yeah. Was that the first time anybody had paid you for your music? I also DJed at like weddings from my friends and my parents for like 30 euros. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, or like school parties. But crucial to understanding a crowd, right? Well, weddings is like, I was more like, they would give me a CD with like, this is the music we like. <laughs> <laughs> Put you it on. play. <laughs> yeah. Play and it pause. Was, it was not like a real DJ set yet, but from the money I got with those things, I would expand my 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 um, gear and, and could practice more. So they find this beat on the internet. And are you selling them actively on the internet or did they find you through this forum and then reach out and like, hey, do you have anything to send us? They found me through the forum because um, cause it, 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 in the Netherlands, a lot of people are like DJs and music producers and now everybody's like DJ and music producer. But at the time it was like a kind of small community. So everybody kind of knew each other. And, and, and what I like a lot about the Dutch mentality is like everybody's helping each other. Everybody's friendly. Everybody's supportive. No secrets. No... No shady stuff, just whenever, like, you want nothing but someone else to, you want to help someone. That's special. Yeah, it was very nice. It's all gone now. <laughs> I still want to help everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you have your own label now and you can do that. But uh, back to all of this, right? So, okay, this is crazy to me that, because you hear different stories of how you got to where you are today, and being 14 and being paid... To, Somebody giving you money for your own original music is a big deal. But then the fact that you were able to rise above, because you said the competition is fierce, right? There's a lot of people making music. Do you know what it was about that record and your talent that just kind of, like, put you above the rest? I don't know. It was just very... The moment it got released, it, it like, a lot of DJs started playing it. It became, like, a really cool club record. I, c I could play the record later. Um, and... Yeah, it, it just worked, and I, I had no idea. I, I just tried something weird, and it didn't sound like what I wanted to do as Marty. So I was like, oh, I could, I could give this idea away anyway. And why do you change your name? Because it's not cool enough? Marty's not cool, Martin Garrix? Well, I like, I like Marty, but 
I thought, um, I don't know, it sounded childish. <laughs> and I was, I, I, even though I was super young, I wanted to not have anything remotely close to being childish. Uh, I didn't want my name to do. Uh, Has it been hard for people to take you seriously due to your age? Well, not seriously. But the moment I started releasing music on, 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 on the first label I got signed to, the first thing people were starting to say is like, he doesn't make his own music, blah, 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 this is not possible. Uh, it sounds like, uh, it's, it's, it doesn't sound like, it sounds like something professional. And that was for me super frustrating. So I started doing these live streams where I was making songs on, on the live stream just to piss off the people who were, uh, <laughs> who were saying all this bull or we're saying the the not true stories and um, also after animals because fast forward like one and a half year later i released animals and that song blew up um or this like no this like two years i think I, I made animals when i was 16 and when i was 17 it got released but also that song the first thing people were saying because of the age was like this is not possible this is not like this, this can't be his production so then i did the same thing i went in the studio i took apart the whole song told why I made every decision, how I did it, until the finest details. Um, but, yeah, the first thing that, that was, like, with my age was I wasn't allowed to drink in clubs, I wasn't allowed to be in some clubs, and people didn't believe I did my own stuff. Which is crazy to me, because I kind of see that as, like, it's obviously rooted in some weird jealousy and also, like, kind of ageist. I I've dealt with the same thing coming up, because I started a radio show when I was... 14 and then working with a whole bunch of adults yeah it's hard to be t taken seriously yeah. or I, I don't know for them to look at you as an equal yeah, yeah. It, it's it's been nothing but an uphill battle and i yeah. still face it today even though i'm freaking 26. it's kind of yeah. crazy for me what else what also i i for me it's about the music i didn't want my age to be like the 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 focus point so of course it's like at the, like especially after animals and and bef the songs before animals when I was signed to to the label. The first thing that people would say in the headlines was like, um, "Listen to this fifteen year old, sixteen year old kid," and I was like, "I have a name." <laughs> um, but and now afterwards, it makes more. It makes sense that it was like. Uh, but when that's happening, like, is that motivating to you? Like, even these people doubting that they're like, "This it was, song it was is more, so so good." For me, it was more frustrating because then suddenly I heard all these like. Apparently, my dad was like co-owner of the label I was signed to, even though my dad <laughs> worked at a auctioning company specialized in stamps. <laughs> like, I, I uh, hear music in that. I, I I read the most ridiculous <laughs> comments on the internet, and I I'm I'm like, whenever I make a song, it's like my baby, you know. So, of course, when you share with the world, you want to know what what people think of it. So I was looking at all the comments and everything and then all, a lot of comments would be good but then a few one would be bad i would be like so sad because of the bad ones but it, it, do you still look at comments today yeah of course but now i still read them i was reading them this morning too because we released a music video yesterday but now i, I have a more a filter for it and and if someone doesn't like it i'm like fine a lot of people do like it and i make the music for those people who 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 feel something and feel good that's it uh, not it's all that matters not every piece of art is for everybody yeah and you don't really necessarily want the person you can't appreciate it to yeah. be forced to enjoy it yeah because then whatever yeah animals do you remember how that record starts um it started with a melody i did when i was 14. this was before i was signed um and i don't know it was it was an old idea I'll also play it later. It sounds completely horrible, but the da, 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 at the time it was. Da, 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 da. But I added the other note in between later. Um, Why'd you do that? Because it sounded a lot like uh, Maximo Crazy from Chesto, which goes like. And so I sent it to Chesto, um, who, was t who I was talking to at the time, and he was like, this is sick, but maybe. Make sure the melody is a little, a little different. <laughs> Chester was my biggest inspiration, so I was trying to do, like, basically take every footstep that he was doing. And he allowed you to do that because he, you DM'd he, him. He took me under his wing. He actually way before Animals, Chester signed a song of mine, Torrent, on his label, and this was this was like two years before Animals. And I just remember I was shaking already because 
I started making music because of the guy. And then suddenly he followed me on Twitter. I think I, I screamed the whole house awake <laughs> when I found out because <laughs> um, I was so excited. And then he was like, man, I love your song Torn. I would love to release it on my label Musical Freedom. And I I thought it was, the, I get goosebumps saying this because I was, I was so excited, so happy and so motivated. Like, and then he, he would start playing it at his shows. I would be on YouTube nights, <laughs> night after night, just looking up videos, trying to find videos from when he was playing the song. And that gave me so much excitement and happiness and motivation and, and thinking to myself like, wow, I want to do this. And, and yes, it's been, it's, it's crazy. H have you ever wondered what he heard in you? I, 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 I think there's so much talent out there. I'm, I'm really happy that, that Chesto, Chesto, um, picked me up, but he said the one thing that, that I remember from your songs was you had such an extinctive, um, use of melodies. Like your melodies were so, um, different and, and it had a lot of energy. The first stuff I made, still some of the stuff I do, but he was like, this worked great in my set. So he started playing it out. You know, you mentioned it had great energy. One of the things that I've noticed in listening to all of your stuff many times over is that you as a producer and a DJ, you have the ability to really match lyrics beautifully. I think some DJs will take lyrics and like they just want that big drop, they want that big sound, and you have the ability to do that. But like the way you work a drop, like, dude, Ocean, like are you so beautiful, so beautiful. That, that song is more relaxed, but it was, yeah, it was really cool. But 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 still, with big forward momentum. Yeah, it, it's like it's right. Is that is that what makes a good producer and a good good DJ? Is it the ability to like understand a story and produce to that story? I don't know. For, for me, I, I, in my case, I just do what feels good, and uh, I I love. I, I'm a huge fan of of beautiful chord progressions, strings. Like uh, like I want I want a song not only the songs that I make, but also the songs that I listen to, I wanted to touch me, you know, I wanted to get like goosebumps, I want to get excitement, happiness. And with every song I make, I, I want people to feel something. I want people to feel happy, euphoric. I want, I want people at the show to start hugging <laughs> random people <laughs> next to them, you know, I want, that's that's why I make music. And it would, with every song I do, I try to capture that feeling. And it's also cool because every song I make, I have a different feeling or different memories to the process of making a song, too. We'll get back to Animals in a second. I want to focus on the record with Khalid. Um, you could put an ocean between our love, 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 it won't keep us apart. Uh, live instruments play a big part in this record. Yeah, a lot you, of strings. Beautiful. Is that like real, Is that a challenge for you, to run that recording session? Um, well, it's, it's more challenging in advance because you have to get... Cause I do uh, ocean we did with like I think fifteen people string uh, I don't know the English word for it ensemble oh, string uh, uh, orchestra oh yes yeah orchestra sorry that's alright um but then before you have to choose where and what what they should play and um, how you're gonna use it but how you're gonna use this also what you can do afterwards but mostly the preparation towards the actual recording takes the most time because you have to score it make sure. Every every instrument plays what it should play, and that it, that it captures the feeling you want correctly. And then seeing everything come together and it and it being like played by I I had goosebumps and it's really rewarding and really a good feeling. So that record in particular, did it start with the lyrics? Did it start with you having a piece of production? It started on a boat in Amsterdam. Um, I had two amazing songwriters, Ilse Ilse Uber and Dwayne Whitmore um, over in Amsterdam and we were on a boat on the canals and uh, I brought my guitar and we were just vibing and then we came with the idea of you could put an ocean between our love, 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 won't keep us apart and then later we went to the studio, we 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 finished a rough demo and we put Alter Boy, this plug-in on Dwayne Whitmore's voice it's like um changes the pitch and the formant. Um It's called Alter Boy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, cool. it's it's a crazy plugin. Like for any producers that are watching here, like it, if you put focus through this, you could you could get the craziest sounds and you could totally 
adjust someone's voice, like how they sound. It's really, it's really cool. Um, so we put Alter Boy on Duane's voice, and it sounds like Khalid. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Khalid sounds many times better than yeah. the Alter Boy <laughs> vocal. But but I had I some some notes. It gave me like the Khalid vibe, and I was like, wow, it would be so crazy if Khalid could do this. And like it was, it was it was meant to be. Someone tweeted at Khalid like, um, "You should work with Martin Garrix," and he he responded like, "Let's go, Martin <laughs> Garrix." And I was like, "What is happening? <laughs> this is crazy, dude. That's the universe, bro." Yeah, one hundred percent. So I sent him this idea, and he 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 says, um, "Bro, I love this. I call Dips," and, <laughs> and I go to my team and I was like, "He wants to call a guy named Dips." <laughs> I had never heard the saying before. And they were like, did Khalid say that to you? Uh, yeah. That's amazing. It means he's going to do the song and he likes it. So um, he did an amazing job on, on the vocal and he, he changed it exactly. He made it his own. And then I went into the studio and I wanted to... It was interesting because I made so many different versions. Live at my shows, I play a more hard-hitting, energetic remix I made. Um, but with the original... Khalid has such a beautiful, relaxed voice. I wanted the song to be just a, a guide, basically, for his hypnotic voice, you know? And, and then when he stopped singing, the drop came. That's when, like, the moment... So it was really cool finding a perfect balance between the instrumental and his vocal. But the drop is, like, the right amount of depth. Do you yeah, know I, it's not too aggressive, but it's also not too... It's You always have a drop in your records, but it's it's... The level that you drop someone that changes, and it's I, I, it's really special. Thanks, man. It's cool. Hey, beautiful human, sorry for the interruption, but I got to tell you about Care Of. I haven't taken vitamins since the Flintstone gummies. And then Care Of entered my life, and I'm like, ah, why not? With the winter blues coming to an end, it really is time to get into a routine that empowers you to feel your healthiest. At least that's how I'm looking at it. So I took Care Of's quiz. It's really easy. Took me like five minutes. They ask me about my diet, my health goals, my lifestyle choices. And then they tell me, like just me, a personalized recommendation, a personalized scientifically backed recommendation for vitamins, protein powders, and more. It's actually kind of impressive because it really could be hard to know what types of vitamins or supplements you should be taking. But care of made it easy to find out what specifically I needed to do to become my healthiest. And it's kind of cool getting the box to my house every month because it's all personalized. Obviously, the vitamins and the protein powders, personalized. But even the little packs, they say your name on it. it it's kind of cute. If you want to try it out and you, you want 30% off your first care of order, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter the code ZaxSang30. That is TakeCareOf.com and enter the code ZaxSang30. Back to the convo. I'm sorry. So when you give him that record, the lyrics are done, and do you know you want to put strings on it by by this point? Like, have you put in like a yeah, I, placeholder? I, um, yeah, I've, I've uh, plugged in on my computer, and um, I can make strings like sound really real. It's actually real strings, but then like sampled, and then you could like. Whoa. But then afterwards, nothing beats real. Nothing beats the real recording. Do most of your records start with you and a guitar? Yeah, a lot. Also, summer day started. And I write a lot of demos and then um, just send them out. We're like, oh, this would be cool for this artist. And then we tr reach out to the artist and they're like, wow, this is sick. I want to jump on this. Um, and then, of course, the artist afterwards can change anything they want lyrically, melodic-wise. It's, it's basically just a rough placeholder or like a rough concept for them to polish. But it, they can change it. But at the end of the day, it's still your say, right? Yeah, 100%. But it's it's a team it's a team thing. They they do some things and back to them like this is sick. What you did there maybe this. It's cool how it was before. It's like you play ping pong with the with ideas. You go back and forth and it's really really fun. You challenge each other. Yeah. It's collaboration. Yeah. What record teaches you the most? Um I think Summer Days has taught me so much Really? cuz I've never done uh the the tempo is 114 BPM and I've never really done something with that groove on that tempo and I don't know I, I wanted to make something completely different I wanted to do something unexpected and I'm really really happy with how it turned out so yeah. Patrick Stump's vocals sick so sick uh, it, 
when you're looking for a vocalist, did you know it was Patrick Stump? Did you have somebody else in mind originally? Not not when we wrote it. Um, when we wrote it, it was really rough, rough demo, but it already had the slap bass in it, and I was like, wow. It's so unexpected for a Garrick song. And then I played it at the A and R meeting and they were like, This is this is this is crazy. This doesn't like and then we had the idea of because the song is so unexpected, it would be even crazier if we had unexpected collabs on it. Um um someone on the team mentioned like, Well, I, I we could get, we could give it a try. We we have a no, maybe we can get a yes. <laughs> um so at least we should try. We should try ask Patrick from Fall Out Boy because he's uh, he has a sick voice and I was like well if he wants to jump on the record I'm I'm I'm, I'm so so happy well, I was very skeptical because a lot of times those brainstorm meetings you say crazy names and then sometimes it happens but sometimes it also doesn't happen and until I have like a vocal in my email I know like it, it's it's sorted you know and he within like a few days he responded like he's man I, I, I love this I'll jump in the studio I'll cut it um I was it was it was crazy. This was January, and in January I also reached out to uh, Macklemore because I had I heard like a rap part on on like um on like the dun, 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 mm-hmm. that section, but I wanted I wanted something because the song is so playful. I wanted to have like a playful like, and I thought Macklemore was the perfect match. And we did a tour six years ago in Australia. <laughs> And from that moment, we've always been talking about doing a song together, but I've never sent him something that I was 100% confident he would love. And this was the first one. I was like, well, may- I could try. Maybe he likes this. And I sent it to him. And same week, he records he records like his verse. And I'm like, and I'm like from it went from being a, s- a super rough demo to like having Macklemore and Patrick from Fall Out Boy feature on it. And it was it was just wild. And then I had like another one and a half month time to to finalize the production. I think both Patrick and Macklemore were completely annoyed by the fact that I'm such a freak for details. <laughs> <laughs> we ended up at version fifty. Ho oh, oh. um, So you're giving them notes. Are they going back to the studio to recut stuff for you? Um, Macklemore did, but I ended up not using it because I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> I'm sure he still loves you. No, we talk we talk all the time. And and in the end we, we all have the same issue and we want to create the best song possible. So yeah. if there's a possibility of, of of making ideas sound better or something or trying something else, you should one hundred percent try it and then afterwards you can decide if it was worth trying, if you're gonna use it or if you're gonna be like, nah, the original was cooler. But that's 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 the whole thing about making making music and, and you wanna challenge each other. They kept on challenging me, like, hey, what if I missed the energy here in the production, this and this and this. So it was constantly going back and forth. So this record teaches you the most. One, obviously, the BPM is different. Two, you're dealing with two major superstars on one record. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you've had, I'm almost positive you've had songs come out in the summer before, but this is like, this has the potential to be a real freaking summer anthem. I I really hope so. That was the... Number one goal from the moment we started writing the demo, I was I wanted to make a song that people could listen to on the beach or at a campfire or driving in in in, in a car with the windows open, just blasting the song, singing along with your friends. I wanted to make a song that will create memories for a lifetime. Like people are like, oh, you remember Summer 219? That song, <laughs> like, you know, you want to you want to be part of someone's story. I've never heard it phrased that way. But that is, isn't that the goal for a musician, right? For me, whenever whenever I see some, if I can brighten someone's day with my music, I'm I'm successful. I, I'm I'm happy, and um, I've 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 made songs like I made a song called Pizza, yeah. um, which is like a very beautiful, lot of strings in the song, very lots of orchestra. Um, <laughs> and it's and, called and Pizza. It's, yeah, I call it Pizza. Uh, and, but people people walk the aisle and, and had, had it on their weddings. And for me, that's like mind-blowing because I'll be in the studio staring at my screen and, and, and humming melodies and whatever. And then for, for people to let me be part of their life in such a special way, it's I'm humbled. I'm honored. I'm honored. How often do melodies hit you? 
Like, Sorry? How often do melodies hit you? Like, will they just come randomly? Um, mostly randomly. It's it's it literally it's the craziest thing. It pops up in my head, or sometimes I'm trying out things. Sometimes I'm 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 messing around with a sound. I'm like, whoa, this sound is crazy. What if I do this and this with it? Um, but now a lot of the songs I'm doing, they start on the guitar. Then we record like a super rough demo, and then afterwards I'm gonna try to find sounds and melodies that match the 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 vocal demo. Do you keep things on your phone? Yeah. Cool. I'll, I'll play it later. <laughs> Not an interview, but I've I've. I have voice notes from from almost every song, and and it's really cool to sometimes find those back because it captures the the moment, you know. Yeah, I, I found one from Summer Days, and I think I want to post it like in like one year from now or something. <laughs> Just like the the, fir the first seed of a record. Yeah, like the the very rough rough. I'll I'll play it to you later. It's really it's really cool. It's special. What's the trick to making a summer sounding song? I for, I think Summer Days what what's really is the playfulness. It's, it's so it's so groovy. It's easy sing along. The melody is super catchy from the hook, and I don't know. I I I think music is all about fun. You wanna you want people to feel good and to feel happy when they listen to your songs. When when you or go my in, songs, I can only talk for myself. <laughs> when you go into the studio, do you say like, okay, I'm gonna make a radio hit, or I'm gonna make a house song, or big room? I see people talking about big room. I have no idea what I'm making before I'm in the studio. I and for me, that's the thing that I like the most now. Because after Animals, I was a little worried and stressed. I was like, oh, everybody was asking me about the follow-up for Animals, and I didn't even have the follow-up ready. <laughs> and then if you talk about the word follow-up, it's, 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 a, it's a stupid word because it, in my mind, there was only, I was like, oh, I should make something like Animals. And as a, as a, now I know, as a, as a producer, you should not think about what you should make. You should just do what feels good. And... Because if you overthink, it will take away from the creativity. And now whenever I'm in the studio, sometimes I make like a just beautiful piano song, nothing else. And I can't use it for Garrick's, but maybe I could one day score it in a movie. Or I, ju I just want to make whatever I feel like. And sometimes it's like a happy song, sometimes it's like a sad song, sometimes it's like a romantic song. Um, and that's the fun thing about creating. Who helps you realize that, though? Who helps you get to the point where you go, okay, I don't need to do another animals. I can just be creatively free. Um, I've had, I, I'm, I'm very, I was very lucky that I had some great mentors help me. Like, it was crazy, Chesto. I started making music because of Chesto. And then one day he took me under his wing and he started like, because he switched from like trance to house music and people, all the trance fans were like so angry that he did that. But he was like, you know, it, it felt good. It was what I wanted to do at that moment. And you should never not do something because you're afraid to do it. Um... In, in in the creative world because you want to challenge yourself you want to try out new things you want to experiment and that brings it back to like the very first moment when I started making music it was all about experimenting and having fun and then I don't know I, th it, I think it was right before Name of Love I was like I'm just going to try out new things see how it goes and because that's what that's what happened with animals I was just having fun trying something new something different and it and it blew up and then Name of Love was a different type of sounding song for Garrix. And it also blew up. So I was like, I should just not worry. I should just do what feels good, do whatever I want to make. Because cause I'm, I'm Martin. Like, nobody could, could like create my art or, or judge my art or tell me what I should make. Because in the end, it happens in my head. And I don't know. Right now, whenever I'm in the studio, I'm, I'm having so much fun. I'm trying out new things. And afterwards, I'll see if I release it on the Garrix or not. You, you refer to Garrix as like a in a third person way. Do you look at the DJ version of you as a separate version of you? Well, it's definitely not the, the real me, you know. It's mm. it's a. Uh, but. No, I, I I meant it in a way that some songs they fit the Garrix profile and some songs it. don't. Um, I have a I have a I have a hip hop alias I'm doing. Uh, it's like a fun <laughs> project called Area Twenty One. It's it's my friend Major and I. And it's two aliens that came to planet Earth. They crashed here with their UFO. <laughs> and obsessed. they just started raging and having fun. And and the project is actually streaming crazy. We did a song called Spaceships, which is which is almost at forty million streams on Spotify. And it's it's a it's a it's a joke project. It's or not a it, I don't see it as a joke. It's a fun yeah, side just... project for spontaneous wow. crazy lyric songs and, and, and it and it works. So 
for me right now, I'm just making music. Some ideas I can use for Area 21, some ideas I can use for Garrick, some ideas I give away to artists on my label. Where I'm like, oh, this melody is sick. You should do something with this, and I'll be in the producer or the royalties, or whatever. I don't need, I don't need like my name on the song. <laughs> I'm just constantly creating, and there's no better feeling than creating. That's beautiful. I know you got to go. Well, you're number one on the DJs list, the top DJs list for like the third year in a row, right? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, do you know why? You, do you know why you keep winning? Because I have an amazing fan base, and it's 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 fan voted. So I don't see myself at all as the best DJ. I'm I'm not even remotely close to how crazy some DJs are, technique and skill wise. But um, I do know what I'm capable of in the studio, and and people listen to the Garrick songs and they vote. So I'm. I don't see myself as the best DJ, but I'm super grateful for the support and the fact that the fans got me got me in the position. What skill do you wish you had? I wish I could fly <laughs> like myself, just not in a plane, but like like a bird, <laughs> and like really quick. So I so the touring was a little more chill. Last question: What record of yours should we listen to to best get to know you? Mm, Forbidden Voices. It's okay. a song I did for free like i think five years ago and i yeah just that song i i closed like a full tour i closed my tour with that song so i have so many beautiful memories i've seen people cry like 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 it was it's 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 beautiful so and for me the whole song the music video it's such a it brings back so many memories dude i I, why did, I, I want to go back to pizza for a second. Why did you name it pizza? Uh, I was eating pizza when I was making the song, and it was an instrumental song. So my project files, <laughs> I can show you afterwards. I named my project files the most stupid names. It's like <laughs> bored on plane to Miami <laughs> to, like, and I, uh, I played it at Tomorrowland for the first time, pizza, or like the demo of pizza, the first version, and... Then the label was like, oh, we should release this really soon because now we have the hype from Tomorrowland. I was like, what? Well, I'd love to, but I don't have a name yet. They were like, what? But the, the, the file name was called Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> or like, a, uh, no, it's called Pizza in Ibiza because I made the song in Ibiza. <laughs> and uh, I was like, you know what? I just released it under Pizza. Beautiful. And the last thing is, would you still DJ a friend's, a friend's wedding today if they asked you to? 100%. You would? Yeah. It was the best wedding DJ ever. Yeah. It, uh, it would be so fun. So if I got married in the next few weeks and I called you, would Just you let do me it? Know. Are you a friend? Well, now we are. Now we are. And there was one time I crashed a wedding in uh, Dubai. It was a they had like a beautiful magical wedding on a on an island, and we were on the island next door next to it, and um, you just show up. Yeah, we ended up like I did it like a two hour long DJ set. What? Do you like that moment? I love you... it. It was great, and they were so happy, <laughs> so grateful. It was really fun. Is That's there any, incredible. Is there anything in your life that you feel like you missed out on because you started this journey so early? For me, no, I I don't think so. Like, at one moment, I I went to like a producer school, so I I I, I missed out on like um, my last two years of the high school, and I never I never went to college. So I don't know, maybe it's like, I hear crazy stories, but in the end, like I travel the world, I I'm at the craziest fun parties. So it's like. You help fuel other people's memories. Yeah, that's my that's my main goal, and I'm forever grateful I get to do that. No want to go to prom? No, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Prom's fun. The DJ probably sucks, though. Well, I did I did it at, like, uh, prom. Did you? Yeah. Do you do, like, remixes of, like, the line dances? No, it was, it was like, house music. <laughs> Can you do, like, a remix of, like, YMCA or the electric slide? I'd love to. I could that, try it. That would be something huge. I did it. I but I, I think prom is is different in the U.S. than it is in Amsterdam. I I grew up in Amsterdam, and there's like a. Uh, I don't know. It's it's fun. What, what is it? What do what do you call it? Prom. Um, I don't even know how you call it in the Netherlands. It's called. It, it's 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 a little different. Same setup, but different. Got it. Martin Garrix. Everybody should listen to Summer Days, obviously. Mm -hmm. But uh, listen to all of your records and go see you perform. You're everywhere and anywhere. It's pretty crazy. I appreciate you taking the time. I have. Thanks for having me. I got books of questions for when you come back. Let's go. A lot more to continue on. I appreciate you. Martin Garrix, everybody. Right. Thank you, man. Thank you for taking the time, man. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed that conversation.
If you did, please subscribe and also check out our podcast. There's a link in the description and also comment and like and do things. Other interviews are on the screen somewhere. So click them. Thanks for watching.